Do you know how to become a scientist? If you don't, this video is for you. Did anyone tell you that there is an ocean of opportunities if you pursue pure science in India? If you or anyone you know is interested in science and is aware of only medical and engineering as career options, then this video is specially for you. It will act as a source of career guidance for you all. Keep watching the video till the end as I unfold this knowledge with you. Hello everyone, welcome to Pragyanam. I am Dr. PPZ and in today's video, I will discuss in detail the path of pursuing pure science and the scholarships you can get while you are pursuing pure science. I wish I knew it when I was a student. I had to learn these things in the hard way through my own academic journey. In India, if you are a bright student in school, you love science and mathematics and you aspire to build a career in science, your elders in the society often encourage you to choose engineering or medicine. While some students are genuinely interested in these fields, most of the students follow these paths due to ignorance about the conventional option, that is pursuing pure science. I assume that people in West Bengal and Kerala know about these paths more than people of other states in India. This statement may be a bit of crude generalization, but this is what I have seen. Let me first tell you the difference between pure science and professional courses like engineering and medical. Pure science aims to understand fundamental principles and uncover natural laws through theoretical exploration, experimentation and observation in disciplines like physics, chemistry and biology etc. Professional courses on the other hand apply scientific knowledge to design and create practical solutions involving the development of technologies, structures and systems to address real world challenges. While pure science contributes to the theoretical understanding of the natural world, Engineering focuses on the practical application of that knowledge to solve specific problems and improve human life. And a scientist is someone who performs research and publishes their results in world-class journals. As a child, I always wanted to be a scientist, especially an astrophysicist. I loved science and mathematics. During class 11 and 12, I took science stream as many of my friends did. So I will start the story from here. What are the common options after class 12 in science stream? We can go to engineering or medical or bachelor's degree in science or BSc in short. I am not going to discuss these two parts here as almost everyone knows about them. There are many great institutes from where we can take a bachelor's degree in science, which I didn't know. Like many of you, I also thought that the state colleges are the only places where we can do BSc. You can do BSc taking any of your favorite subjects such as physics, chemistry, mathematics, zoology, botany, etc. as major subjects and you can do BSc from IISC, IITs, ISERs, NIGER, NITs and central universities. These are premier institutes in India and you will get a very good exposure to your respective fields. But in order to get into these institutes, you need to have very good rank in JEE or NEET or you have to qualify the entrance examinations organized by these institutes. You can also choose a good nearby private or government college to do your BSc from. I did my BSc from Biborwa College, Guwahati, taking physics as major subject. The most interesting thing is, you can apply for a scholarship named INSPIRE to pursue pure science. You have to apply for this scholarship during your first year of admission into a BSc program. I was eligible for this scholarship but I could not avail it because I got to know about it in my third year of BSc. It was too late by then. In the comment section, I will provide the link of the government website where you can get to know the full details of the scholarship. Now what can you do after BSc? If you don't want to study further, you can try applying for government and private jobs such as banking, civil services, etc. Or you can take a B.Ed degree and apply for graduate teacher posts. And if you are willing to study further, you can do a master's degree or MSc in your respective subject. The premier institutes that I have mentioned earlier provide integrated courses where you can do both bachelor's and master's degree. If you have done BSc from other institutes and you want to get enrolled into the premier institutes for master's degree, there are several entrance examinations you can clear and get into these institutes. You can do MSc from central universities, state universities and private universities also. I did my MSc in physics from Gohati University, which is a state university. If you got Inspire Fellowship during your BSc, it will continue till MSc also. During MSc, in many institutes, you have to choose a specialization in your respective field. For example, my specialization was astrophysics during MSc. You may also have to do a project during your MSc. And these projects are very important when you are applying for a PhD position in India or abroad. 
If you have a research paper or two during masters, the chances of getting PhD admissions in a good place abroad becomes high. I did a project during my MSc, but I didn't have any research paper. After MSc, if you don't want to study further, all the job opportunities are still open. You can go for banking sector, civil services, other gov and private jobs or become a postgraduate teacher. If you want to pursue PhD, which is the highest academic degree in India, you have to clear NET JRF in your respective field. If you qualify NET or SET, you are eligible to apply for assistant professor posts in colleges and universities. And if you qualify JRF, then besides being eligible for lectureship, you can also get fellowships for pursuing PhD. Even the Inspire Fellowship can be extended till your PhD. All the institutes that I mentioned earlier provide PhD degrees. You can pursue PhD in central, state or private universities also. There are many premier research institutes in India where you can apply for PhD positions. For being eligible to apply for a PhD position in these premier institutes, you have to qualify JRF or you have to get very good percentile in exams like GATE or ZEST. You may have to appear in written exams and personal interviews to get selected in these institutes. I did my PhD from the Indian Institute of Astrophysics Bangalore, which is a premier institute. So it doesn't matter much where you did your BSc and MSc from, you can still get into these institutes for PhD. After PhD, among all other job opportunities, you get the opportunity to become an assistant professor in colleges and universities. This is one of the highest paying jobs in India. <coughs> Although PhD is not mandatory for assistant professor jobs in colleges and universities in India, but it is preferred. And when you go for an interview, you will see how difficult it is to get a job without having a PhD. After doing PhD, you can apply for postdoctoral positions in India and abroad. You get very good money in postdocs, especially abroad. I completed my PhD in 2023 and got enrolled for postdoctoral research in Edis, another premier institute for research in astrophysics. After getting at least 3 or 4 years of postdoctoral experience, you become eligible to apply for faculty positions in the premier research institutes that I mentioned earlier. I hope the information has been helpful for all of you. Please share it with those who might benefit. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to Pragyanong for more such informative videos.